All right. Welcome to 30 Days of Photoshop. Today is day one, and we're giving you a tour of Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com, where we make learning fun. And welcome to this special 30 Days of Photoshop series. Now, if you haven't already done so, be sure to sign up for the 30 Days of Photoshop. You can just follow the link. Boop right up there where you can download the sample images. You'll also get a calendar where you can follow along descriptions of each of the individual days and everything that you need to go from beginner in Photoshop all the way to master things like compositing, retouching, and more. So today is day one. We're starting off with a tour of Photoshop and talking about the benefits of using Photoshop as compared to other image editing programs. So Photoshop is the most advanced and comprehensive photo editing program out there. It'll let you do everything from basic adjustments all the way up to advanced compositing and retouching. And that's why I love using this program because there's really no restriction as to what you can do with your images. However, if you're just looking to make very simple edits, maybe changing the white balance or the exposure of your photograph, there are programs that are designed to be a little bit more simple like Lightroom. Photoshop actually allows you to edit images just like you would in Lightroom, but a whole lot more. So there's really no limit on your creativity when using an advanced photo editor like Photoshop. So we're starting off with our tour. Let's jump into Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop. Now the first thing we're gonna do is open our sample image and you can actually download the sample image on flurn.com. Just follow the link right down below. So we're gonna go to file and down to open. And then here we're in our images, which you can download. And we're gonna go to tour photoshop.jpg. We've got a fluffy looking awesome picture of a dog. And to start off, I'm gonna click on F for full screen. That's just gonna hide everything else. So we basically see just our image. So you'll notice we've got quite a bit going on in the program and it looks like there's so much, but it's broken up into a couple of different panels and understanding what those panels do makes things a lot simpler. So let's start off with a general overview of the different areas in Photoshop. We have our tools, the options for our tools, and we have our palettes. And then at the very top, we have our file menu. So let's get started with our tools, which will allow you to do basic editing in Photoshop. So we start off with our move tool, which will allow you to move layers around. We have a couple of selection tools that allow you to select certain areas. Now, once you have an area selected, you'll only be able to edit in that area. And we've got an entire episode on selections coming up soon. We've got our crop tool for changing the size of your image, an eyedropper tool for selecting certain colors. We've got tools for removing objects like our spot healing brush tool, as well as the clone stamp tool. You can paint on your image with the brush tool. You can also add gradients with the gradient tool. You can dodge and burn here, add a blur, and even make advanced selections with the pen tool. You can create shapes with the shape tool and change your different view, like rotate your canvas and zoom in and out right here. And then on the bottom, you've got your color pickers where you can simply click and choose what color you'd like to edit with your photograph. Now, throughout the 30 days of Photoshop, we're gonna go through all the most commonly used tools and applications. So don't worry if it seems a little bit overwhelming right now, we're gonna go through them one by one so you have a good idea of what everything does. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at our options bar. So you'll notice as I select different tools here on the left hand side, we have different options up here that correspond to those tools. For instance, if I grab a selection tool, I can choose what type of selection I'm gonna make, whether I wanna feather this edge, and I can choose the different style that I'd like for that as well. If I wanna crop my image, you can see that I can change the ratio of my crop, I can add straightening, and I have some other options to delete crop pixels, and I can do a content aware crop as well. And then things like my brush tool, I can change the opacity, the flow of my brush as well. So every different tool that you choose has different options built into it, and that's right up here in your options bar. Next, we're moving on to our palettes, and these give you more information and control over your photograph. Now, palettes can be arranged in many different ways. So your version of Photoshop likely looks a little bit different from how I've got things arranged. We've got things here to basically show a great presentation for tutorials. But if there's any time that I mention something and you don't see it here, you can always go to window and find any of your palettes right here. So for instance, if I go to my histogram, there we go, let's go ahead and bring this up. This will bring up the color and light information in my photograph. 
In this case, we have a spike on the right hand side telling me that most of my photograph is pretty light. If we had a spike on the left hand side, it would be saying most of my image is pretty dark. And that makes sense looking at my image. Now, let's say you don't have histogram there. You could always go to window and down to histogram and it would go ahead and open it up for you. Now, these palettes can be arranged and organized however you'd like. Let's say you're working on a graphic flyer and you were working with a lot of text. Well, you might want to go here to your character menu, which will allow you to choose your different font faces here. You can choose your different font weights, your sizes and different things like that. Maybe you want to pull this out. So you can see it's kind of docked for me right now. I can click here, which is going to expand this out. Let's say I want this to show up all the time. I can go ahead and click on this tab and simply bring it out. We're going to put this right over here and I'm going to do the same thing with my paragraph. There we go. So as I'm using my type tools, these are always going to be there. As I move my image around, you can see these are going to stay there the entire time. Now I can combine these together if I'd like by clicking right here on this little tab and putting it up here with the other tab. And you can see that they're both in the same menu. And if I'd like, I can go ahead and collapse this down and expand it back out again. And of course, I can put it right back where it was the first time. So it's hanging out here with everything else and everything is condensed. Now you can also save workspaces for different types of work. Let's say I do want to have a workspace just for when I'm making graphics and text. Well, I can go ahead and click these out. Let's go ahead and expand them. There we go. So we have our character menu and our paragraph menu, which I want to be always visible. Next, I'm going to go ahead and save these out by going to window down to workspace and going to new workspace. And we're just going to call this graphics and text. Now you can decide what you'd like to actually be a uh, part of this workspace. You can save your keyboard shortcuts, your menus and your toolbar. In this case, we're just going to hit save. And this is going to be my graphics and text. Now, now I'm going to go ahead and put these back. And let's say the next time we want to work on our graphics and text workspace, all we have to do is go to window down to workspace and go to graphics and text and take a look at that. They're exactly where we save them as, or I can go back to what we were before, just Aaron tutorial and they're back right over here and I can go ahead and nest them together again. So you can add or remove different palettes based on the type of work that you're doing and based on what you commonly use in Photoshop. So my suggestion after the 30 days of Photoshop would be to figure out which of these tools you actually use frequently and have those visible and then go ahead and hide everything else. You can always get back to it again just by going to your window menu. So here's some of the common windows that I tend to use. Here we have our history, our property window, our histogram and adjustment layers. Next we have our brushes and our brush settings. Next we have our characters our paragraph and some actions as well. So you can rearrange these again at any time you'd like, add or remove them. They don't go away permanently. You can always put them back. Next, we're moving on to some larger palettes. Now I have my navigator palette here, very large. The only reason for this is so I can put a video of me right up here in the very top corner so you can see me at all times during these tutorials. When I'm working in Photoshop, generally I have a slightly different layout if I'm not making a tutorial. And down here we have our layers, channels and paths, which are all grouped together. For now, we're just going to talk about layers, which were one of the cornerstones of working in Photoshop. So our day three of Photoshop is all about layers. We're going to show you everything you need to know, but between your basic tools and your layers, that's where you're going to be doing the majority of your work. So for instance, let's go ahead and create a new layer. Just click on this little plus icon here, and I'm going to go ahead and grab my spot healing brush tool. And I want to remove this little post on the background. So we're just going to click and drag right over here on this little post. There we go and let go. And you can see it completely removes. It's incredibly easy to do. It will do a little bit more cleanup and there we go. Now, because that was on a new layer, I can turn this layer off and on at any time and get that back if I want to get it back or I can leave it gone. And layers are one of the things that makes Photoshop so powerful because you can actually save out a document with all of your layers intact. So at any time you can come back and turn these layers off and on because at no point are you doing anything destructive to that original image. So throughout these 30 days, not only are you going to learn Photoshop, but you're going to learn the best way to use Photoshop and that's non destructively. So by now we've gone over our tools our options and our different palettes. Now it's time to go over our menus. 
So Photoshop's menu system is where we access our more advanced controls and do our file management like opening and saving. Now, just a little note, I'm using a Macintosh computer. If you guys are using a PC, it might look a little bit different, but everything is going to be there. So we're gonna start off with our Photoshop. Here's where we can go down to our preferences and th see things like our interface, our export options, and change our performance options. Next, we're going to our file menu, and here's all of our file management. So things like opening, closing, saving, and exporting out. In our edit menu, we're gonna see things like undo and redo. We have some more advanced tools here, and we can even go in there, down to the bottom and change our keyboard shortcuts, which is very powerful. We're gonna be giving you keyboard shortcuts through these 30 days. That's the one way to get fast in Photoshop is learning your keyboard shortcuts for every different tool and feature. And you're gonna be surprised at what you learn by the end of these 30 days because we're putting the keyboard shortcuts on the screen every time I mention one. Next, we have our image menu, and here's where you can do things like auto tone and color your image. You can change the size of your image and even do more advanced things like analyze the measurements and scales of your image. In our layer menu, we can add new layers. You can change layer styles, including things like a bevel and emboss. Maybe you wanna do a pattern overlay. We'll show you how to use things like layer masks and smart objects, and you can even merge your layers down the bottom. We have a lot of options for type, and when we start using type in later tutorials, we'll show you how to use many of these things to enhance the type in your images. Our selection menu is just for selections, and again, selections allow you to only edit certain areas of your photos. We've got an entire episode on selections coming up soon. Here you can do things like select all, deselect, you can select a color range, you can even just select your subject, and you can even save and load selections as well. In your filter menu, you can do things like blur and sharpen. You can even distort your image and make it look like a painting. Some really cool things are hidden in this menu, and we're gonna show you how to use some of the most commonly filters throughout this series. Photoshop also includes tools for doing basic 3D modeling and rendering, and that's all available in your 3D menu. Here in your view menu, you can do things like zoom in and out. You can show all types of different features here in Photoshop and you can add things like guides or rulers if you need to do a little bit of measuring in your photos. We've already talked about the window menu, but we'll show you how to arrange everything so you have multiple images together. You can arrange them. Here you can save and load different workspaces, and of course we have all of our different windows to access different parts of Photoshop. And last but very much not least, we have our help menu, which is very, very well done. Let's say I'm describing something and you're not sure where to find it in Photoshop. Let's say I'm talking about gradients. All you have to do is type in gradients and all of a sudden we have all these different areas where we can add gradients. So if we wanna just take a look at our gradients window, we can see that, or look at this. There's a layer style called a gradient overlay and we can take a look at that as well. So if I ever mention something and you're not sure where it was, or if you think, oh man, Aaron talked about gradients, uh, in episode four, but I don't remember where they are, simply go to your help menu, type it in, and it's gonna show you exactly where you can find it within Photoshop. So that's our tour of Photoshop. Now, I know there's a lot going on, but don't worry. By the end of these 30 days, you're gonna feel very comfortable using Photoshop and even confident with advanced techniques like retouching and compositing. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to sign up for the calendar, daily reminders, and your sample images. You can follow the link on your screen or right down below. Join us for these 30 days of Photoshop. I can't wait to get started. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.